Hello my soccer universe, life, life. I went to this video early in the morning today, right after the Italy video and then life threw up curveballs. But here I am in the early afternoon talking finally about what happened in the Premier League uh, the past two days with a little bit Eredivisie action sprinkled on. But we will focus of course on the Premier League. You can probably tell from me wearing my first ever Chelsea jersey, my first ever Premier League jersey at that. Uh, Chelsea had a good a good result. Um, yes, I was wearing Leicester for the last video, now I wore chair. Chelsea had a double and Chelsea with a good win over Leicester, more or less controlled their own destiny into going into the top four. They have now two chances to do so, uh, into the Champions League, they have now two chances to do so. The better use the first one because the second one is not all that clear. Same goes for Liverpool, who thanks to Chelsea's win, had to get a win on their own and they did the same thing. So uh, the whole Leicester story that I think I said in the last video, it's so easy to root for Leicester and you really, uh, you know, the neutrals really would like to see Leicester go in. But I said it all, all along. It looks very, no, not all, all along, but a few weeks ago I said, yeah, I think it will be the big guys who will make it and exactly that turned out that it was not now that Leicester missed that one, this was early on. We also had a remarkable comeback from Brighton against Manchester City uh, that we have to talk about. We had a slapstick performance by Spurs where of course Harry Kane is also causing all kinds of uh, upheaval. And last but not least, uh, the uh, last game is Crystal Palace coach, at least at home, for uh, Ro uh, Roy Hodgson. So let's get into it. I want to actually start with Man United Fulham, just for the reason that Cavani scored an absolute gem of a goal. Uh, the way he sees that the keeper is out and the way he sweetly touches and guides it into net, beautiful. Also has to be said, we had in the Premier League um, many speculators back and yeah, the yellow-green movement uh, is making a big comeback at United and I saw him, there were some people throwing scarves and that did not sit well with some... <sighs> Please, let the people protest in peace. Uh, the game itself, United should have probably uh, pulled it away, but then later, longer the game went on, uh, Fulham actually got more chances. In the end, maybe it deserved to get the draw, which they did through Brian in the 76th. Um, then, City Brighton, Gunduan very early, early on gives them uh, the, fir the first goal. You really thought, yeah. Uh, City actually want to confirm that they are champions, they don't want to ma ma mail it in and save the energies for the Champions League final, which never ever really works, to be honest. Uh, that is something that I've uh, realized, but you know, we may see it. In any, in any, in any case, uh, they get the 1-0, however, then Cancelo is sent off for a last man tackle. I think it, uh, it was all right, uh, where then uh, Pep had to take on a fair, off the Ferran Torres, Borot Garcia, and to kind of uh, switch things up a little bit. Uh, Phil Foden made a wonderful goal right after half, makes it 2-0, and you think the game is done? No. Watch the goal by Trossard. That was one, where he just has the ball, and he, I, I want to say, dances, steps, little steps, into the net to make it 1-2 and that actually gave Brighton some life uh, and in the end uh, Webster and Burn in the 72nd, 72nd and 76th turned the game around and give Brighton a big win. Again, didn't count for much over in the standings but it was a big win nonetheless. Which leads us to Chelsea Leicester, a game that I really made an effort to watch because I thought this is probably the most exciting game remaining in the Premier League um, and it was a really good game especially from the Chelsea. Uh, the way Chelsea played in the fir first half, everything was perfect, except for uh, the finishing. The finishing touch, uh, and it really, uh, Timo Werner says, as I said, right, I, you know, it's not that I'm a big Timo Werner fan or whatever, I actually think that he's misunderstood, but he scores two goals, and again, one is not given for an offside, very clear offside, where he just has to be a little bit more aware of the line, and the second one, I don't know why he's even celebrating, it was a clear handball, and then he's even discussing afterwards. Uh, this was not one uh, at the beginning of the, fir of the first half, but Chelsea by that time should have easily have wrapped up the game. They, uh, a two-goal lead for Chelsea would have been more than deserved. They were really impressive, really playing well. 
fan support uh, could have had something with it. The only thing that I thought was a little bit um, worrisome is that Kante had to come off in the 30 second. Kovacic came on. Kovacic was born in Linz, my hometown. Plays for Lask. I think I always call him Lask's greatest player because I think no ever player that ever played for Lask at any uh, stage managed to go to Inter Milan, uh, Real Madrid and uh, Chelsea. Easily the best player that Lask ever produced. <laughs> uh, the goal still came then uh, early in the second half. Uh, Rüdiger with his upper thigh just uh, pops it over the line. You thought again it was handball, but, but it was not. And then uh, penalty where I don't know what Fofana is doing there. Uh, he's in, in the box. He, uh, Werner is running to the out, is running out, out of the box. There's no need, need for such, such a tackle. Uh, but when the free kick is given, they of course look at the war. It was inside very clearly and Jorginho makes the penalty 66. At that moment, I actually thought the game is done. However, it was exactly Kovacic who spills up a ball rather easily and Ndidi plays it to Iannaccio and in 76, 2-1. Chelsea still was the better, better team, but then Ayose Perez late in stoppage time misses an absolute sit and it could have well ended 2-2 and finishing is the one thing that Chelsea really has a problem with. I think if they had a, a clinical finisher up there and maybe this team, this is still a very young, young team, I totally agree with um, Tuchel, they just need to uh, find their way forward. If they can do that, I think Chelsea is a veritable contender for the title next season. Um, the next game I want to mention is, of course, uh, Spurs against Aston Villa. <laughs> ah. <laughs> yeah, Region, not Kajon, Region. He first is uh, really instrumental in the goal by Bergwijn in the eighth, in the eighth minute. To give Tottenham the lead uh, but then he produces an own goal you have to see to to believe it he wants to clear it and it's like uh, when you go bowling and the, the ball goes to, to the back and it's, that's exactly went to the back of the net uh, and then he's also not looking very very good on the go-ahead head goal through Oli Wat, Watkins where he also completely uh, is out of sorts there and so Villa are more or less gifted a 2-1 lead there will Big chance kind of after the half. I think Kane could have taken it, but in the end, I think it um, uh, uh, got to Lamela. I think, um, I, I don't quite, but in the end, it's a 2-1 loss for Spurs, which now means that they have to will have to play Conference League. And it really goes that Harry Kane leaving, uh, demanding to leave the club is really because seemingly uh, the last two years have definitely been misguided for Spurs in many ways. I personally see it's very hard for him to leave. I think if there's any tra tra transfer, it needs to be uh, because no no one is going to pay the 150 million pounds or whatever it is. There needs to be an exchange with players and so on to give Spurs a little bit something back. Uh, however, I honestly don't really see it happening that easily. Although PSG could be an option, I'm not sure if he wants to go there though. Crystal Palace, as I said, Roy Hodgson, his last uh, home game as a Crystal Palace coach. He had a big standing ovation. It was great to have people there to kind of send, send, send him off. But the game didn't all go that well. Pepe from a short range gives Arsenal the lead, playing in their new away jerseys, which I think, except for the color tone, look actually really, really nice. Benteke gets the equalizer for Crystal Palace and a long look that this will end up in a draw, which actually, actually would not have, have been the better of a result. But in stoppage time, Martinelli and Pepe, uh, the Martinelli goal really nicely assist by Oedegaard, give Arsenal a 3-1 win and Arsenal so, suddenly can win. A win was also what uh, Liverpool needed. A win at Burnley and they would control their own destiny. Uh, and Burnley is a tough opponent and they fought hard, however in the end Liverpool get the, uh, the win. Firmino just before the half, Phillips right after the half, a wonderful cross by Mane. I mean this was very very soft lob that Phillips can just head head in. But uh, there were chances for Burnley, I mean they could have, if they score, score a goal it might end up in, in, in a draw. We're not, not talking about an easy win for Liverpool anymore, uh, Oxford Chamberlain in the 88th puts it away and Liverpool control their own destiny. And lastly, um, West Ham, though they miss a penalty through Declan Rice in the third minute and go down a goal by Pereira, turn it around, Suchik before the half and then Ogbonna in the 82nd and Mike Mikel Antonio in the 88th give West Ham a win, which actually puts them now on route to the Europa League and not the Conference League, 
either one would actually be a big um, reward in a way for West Ham. And so after all this craziness, we have the following standings. And we of course concentrate now at first at the top four race. We see Leicester falls out of the top four. They have been the entire season so far in the top four. Now they fall out again, it's similar to last season. I think the loss to Newcastle is the one where you really have to say, okay, this is where you hurt yourself. I still think it's a successful season for Leicester because you a, won the FA Cup for the first time, so this is a big one. And, sec and secondly, despite having a much smaller budget, I mean, Leicester is not a small team in England anymore. And I think we can definitely uh, slowly start anointing them towards the top six in England. More so than your uh, Spurs and Arsenals, for sure. Um, they are still very much an outsider and probably they will end in fifth which ahead of the season I think they would have gladly taken. Of course, a top four finish would have probably boosted them to another level, but at the moment they have only 42% chance to make it into the Champions League. It could come down to goal difference, but at the moment Liverpool is four goals in the clear. Uh, yeah, let's say Liverpool winning at Crystal Palace, uh, winning at home to Crystal Palace, only 1-0. Leicester City has to play Spurs at home make it 5-0, then Leicester would go in. Is it likely? Not very likely at, at all. Uh, but you also, although Chelsea has a slight advantage, you still don't feel quite safe about Chelsea for the simple reason they have to play Aston Villa away from home. And as we just saw at Spurs, that's not the easiest of opponents. And you also have a Champions League final to prepare. Um, as I said, expected things pretty much reflect what it was there. And when we look at um, a conference league towards a Europa League, it also with a three point cushion, West Ham United is very, very much uh, favored to go in there. They would have to lose their last game, uh, which it's not likely because Leicester has something to, to play for. I think uh, Spurs it will, it will not get that win. So, who are West Ham playing? Southampton. That should be a win uh, and as I said it's all played on the, at the same time five o'clock on Sunday. Sunday will be a big day. We have Serie A, we have uh, the Premier League Serie A at 8.45, Premier League at 5, we have the Ligue 1 at 9. Lots of stuff uh, happening all at, 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 at the same time, lots of exciting stuff. I'm a little bit, we're not talking about Ligue 1 and Serie A here, but they're, 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 they're also are more or less at the same time. Um, as I said, Liverpool, Crystal Palace, Leicester City, Spurs are uh, the big ones. Then, uh, of course, West Ham, United and Southampton. These are the games that really matter. The rest could have moved somewhere else too. Ah, yeah, Aston Villa, Chelsea. Not forgetting about that one, of course. Let's very briefly, I watched a little bit of the goals I watched of the playoff semifinals for the Conference League, Utrecht. Uh, getting a 1-0 win over Groningen uh, with a very late goal uh, through Gustafsson uh, after a free kick and then the ball comes back way back to him and then uh, Feyenoord beat the City Zero Sparta with two goals through Berghuis, a penalty and uh, Boichel Dijk makes an own goal in the 33rd so very quickly also with spectators it was rather um, a nice scene to see and so those two play on Sunday now 12.15 this has been uh, moved seemingly of who will end up in the in the Europa Conference League and Feyenoord of course has a home game we have tonight uh, or, or this in the relegation semi-finals uh, which we'll talk about when I um, summarize what happened in the Premier League um, on the weekend then we'll know about that as well so yeah, I would be interested to hear what you thought about in the Premier League. Um, do you agree with me that Chelsea and Liverpool will actually make it? I think it looks very, 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 very likely will Spurs pull out this, uh, <laughs> the win and West West Ham losing because I think that's all that there is to play for. In any case, give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video, subscribe to my channel if you want to see more and I will talk to you soon. Bye! Hey there, I really hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you might enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing and clicking the little bell icon so that you get updated whenever something happens in my soccer universe. With that, have a wonderful day. Bye!